Nearly 37 years after the Vietnam War ended, toxic chemicals in the herbicide Agent Orange that US forces sprayed during the war still linger in Vietnam's soils and watersheds. Earlier this year, Congress approved about $15 million for dioxin cleanup at a former American air base in the coastal city of Da Nang, and $3 million for so-called related health activities. But although U.S. funding on this issue has increased sharply in recent years, the U.S. still disputes Vietnam's long-standing claim that dioxin exposure causes health problems. FSRN's Mike Ives has more from Da Nang. Forty years ago, Da Nang was a war zone, but today its beaches are quiet. If you stroll along them on a sunny fall afternoon, you'll see Vietnamese teenagers playing volleyball and foreign tourists sipping cocktails at beachside resorts. But a reminder of the war that ended in 1975 persists at the former U.S. Air Base here, where rows of decrepit airplane hangars lie innocuously in grassy fields. This is one of three former U.S. military sites in today's communist Vietnam, where the soil contains elevated levels of dioxin and other toxic chemicals used in the wartime herbicide known as Agent Orange. According to the Associated Press, the U.S. sprayed about 11 million gallons of Agent Orange over southern Vietnam from 1962 to 1971 in order to defoliate jungles and destroy crops. The chemical's notoriously toxic ingredient, dioxin, will linger for generations in Vietnam's soils, watersheds, and food chains. Today, the U.S. says it's making a serious effort to address Vietnam's Agent Orange legacy. This April, Congress approved $15.5 million to clean up dioxin at the Da Nang Air Base using technology that will detoxify the soil by heating it to high temperatures. Congress also allocated $3 million for so-called related health activities. By contrast, from 2007 to 2010, the U.S. contributed about $21 million for addressing Agent Orange. Good afternoon. My name is Kevin Teichman and I am the United States government co-chair, along with my government of Vietnam counterpart, Dr. Le Kay Sung, of the Joint Advisory Committee on Agent Orange Dioxin, or JAC. At a September news conference in Hanoi, the Vietnamese capital, Dr. Kevin Teichman from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency lauded U.S.-Vietnamese cooperation on the Agent Orange issue, but declined to say whether related U.S. funding will continue to increase after this year. I cannot commit that that trend will continue. That will be for Congress to decide. But nonetheless, I think it's very important to see how much, how many resources the United States has contributed up to, in fact, 55 percent of the total amount that's been um, devoted to this topic today. It's hard to say how much money it will take to fully address Vietnam's Agent Orange legacy. The state-controlled media says Vietnam hasn't yet determined the final price tag. The U.S.-Vietnam Dialogue Group on Agent Orange Dioxin a bilateral coalition of experts, advocates, and Vietnamese officials, has estimated it will take $300 million from 2010 to 2020 to address Agent Orange here, but the report doesn't say how much money will be required after 2020. Whatever the price, it's clear that the former wartime foes disagree about the links, or lack thereof, between dioxin exposure and health problems. The U.S. maintains there is no scientific evidence to prove any link, But Vietnam says although no specific clinical symptoms have been found on the toxic effects of dioxin exposure, 3 million Vietnamese have suffered from dioxin-related illnesses, ranging from cardiovascular problems to congenital deformities. Okay, well, it was used as a defoliant during the war to clear vegetation uh, so that the communists could be seen or would be forced to operate further from American bases. And it was unclear whether the people using it at the time knew that it was essential ingredient dioxin was as poisonous as it was and intended to stay in the ground and spoil an area polluted for extended periods of time. Uh, and many veterans on all sides, the communists, are, the non-communists, Vietnamese and Americans, were, were exposed to this. Carl Thayer, a Vietnam expert at the Australian Defense Force Academy, says although U.S. and Australian military personnel who were exposed to dioxin during the Vietnam War have received some compensation from chemical manufacturers, Vietnam has failed in its attempts to win compensation through the U.S. court system for people it claims are Agent Orange victims. So, again, it's uh, it's an essential component of the Vietnamese negotiating with the United States, no matter how good the relationship are, and they're very, very good, uh, that the Vietnamese still demand that the U.S. continue to contribute and contribute more. 
uh, to, to its reduction, you know, as a, as a humanitarian gesture. And, and more so because as time goes on, the U.S. veterans, Australian veterans have been compensated. And the Vietnamese are trying to use that as proof. Aha, well, you're giving them to veterans because you saw the, the damage that it caused. Thayer says while the U.S. disagrees with Vietnam's contention that there is a clear link between dioxin exposure and health problems, the U.S. gives money to nonprofits that assist Vietnamese with disabilities who may be suffering from dioxin-related illnesses. Agent Orange, when I first came here to Vietnam, I was working in the health sector, and uh, anything that was related to a deformity was called Orange. And at that time, if you were working with the U.S. government, they didn't want to hear you use the word Agent Orange. It was just a word you didn't want to use because you weren't going to get any funding. Mark Conroy is the Da Nang representative for the Oakland, California-based East Meets West Foundation, which is one of the international nonprofits receiving U.S. funds to work with people in Vietnam. Conroy says East Meets West assists people regardless of the cause of their disabilities. We don't necessarily identify or try to identify people who may be affected with Agent Orange. We just take all the disabled people in the, in the areas that we're working in and include them in the programs because there's no way that you can really uh, identify. There's no real way of identifying people that could be affected with the Agent Orange, mainly because they, uh, there's no science behind it. Uh, there's, no, there's no real medical, medical science behind it. There's only statistical evidence. Conroy's colleague, Lei Nob Nyan, administers a program that provides assistance to Da Nang residents thanks to a three-year, $500,000 grant from the U.S. Agency for International Development. The grant, which expires this year, helps to fund wheelchairs, hearing aids, rehabilitation services, and corrective surgical procedures. East Meets West says it costs $300 to provide one person in Vietnam with corrective surgery and a prosthetic device. Nói vấn đề này thì nó cũng bản thân riêng bản thân mình thì chia sẻ thì nó cũng không Increasing the budget will be good for everyone, not just people affected by dioxin. If the U.S. government gives more help for this problem, I think it will help to strengthen the relationship between the Vietnamese and American people. Ngan says that while many Da Nang residents have learned about Agent Orange from local media reports, they typically don't pay close attention to where funding for dioxin cleanup or related health services comes from. Mike Ives, FSRN, Da Nang.